Welcome to the first FIA race event in India for a decade. This is going to be a really, really entertaining weekend here in Hyderabad in the south of India. And that is the Charminar or Moskrum 1591 that is the center of the city. And we are here just next to the Hussein Sagar Lake for the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship, the 2023 Green Co Hyderabad E Prix. This is the fourth uh, round of the season. And it will be, as I say, the first Formula E race happening in India. There's a look at the circuit. But we have had three races so far this season. The first one won by Jake Dennis in Mexico City. Then the next two in Diria won by Pascal Verlein in the Porsche. Uh, now we're here in Hyderabad, the first of three brand new race tracks coming up. Cape Town in February and then Sao Paulo in the middle of March. Double header in Berlin, a race in Monaco, double header in Jakarta, new race for Formula E in Portland, Oregon, double header in Rome, double header in London to complete the season. So first practice session about to get underway. Let's say uh, look at Jake Dennis a little earlier on, second in the championship. I presume that's what he's uh, meaning with that uh, with that sign. Nick Cassidy getting ready to go also. Rene Rast after a podium finish last time out in Diria. Looking for a nice performance here as well. And uh, Eduardo Mortara finally got off the mark in terms of points last time out in Diria also. But the man with the most points at the top of the championship is Pascal Verlein. 68 points for the Tag Heuer Porsche driver. Jake Dennis behind him, six points behind. Even if neither of those drivers score any points this weekend, they will still be 1-2 in the championship at the end of Saturday because Buemi and Bird and the like are a little too far away from being able to catch them. And some big names struggling to get off the mark in the early stages. Antonio Felix da Costa in the Porsche only with six points reigning. Champion Stoffel van Dorn, one point from the first three races. Uh, Max Gunter yet to be off the mark as well for the Maserati team. Only one team not off the mark yet in the team's championship. And that is the Apt Cooper team. They are uh, one point behind Neo 333, but at the top, it's Avalanche Andretti and Tag Heuer Porsche who are uh, fighting it out. The Andretti team with um, Porsche powertrains. Now I've got Nelson Piquet Jr., the season one champion, and Karun Chanduk with me in the uh, commentary position. And Karun, here's a look at this brand new Hyderabad street circuit. Yeah, I mean, they've done a, a really interesting layout, I think. It's got quite a, quite a good flow to it. Um, the first chicane is really quite fast. Uh, the driver's approaching. Um, at, at a decent speed and then it's quite a run Jack to the turn three hairpin big braking zone quite a tight hairpin where we're gonna have the attack mode it's quite dusty offline so I think overtaking could be tricky uh, and then you come into this middle part of the lap turn six quite a tight left-hander and then seven eight nine ten eleven come at you pretty quickly one after the other 12 13 a little chicane before a, a hairpin at 14 and then you're coming up towards the end of the lap another chicane at 16 17 and then the right hander at turn 18 brings you to the finish line well we had shakedown earlier on nelson and it was it was very dusty offline and very dusty online also to be honest hey everybody um yeah i mean it's a uh, very interesting track i think um not only for the dust but because it's gonna be it seems like it's gonna be a quick a quick track so the quicker it is, obviously, the, the higher the chance of drivers going a little bit offline. And obviously, as we saw, a lot of dust, meaning that if you go a bit offline, uh, you're going to have a hard time because the track is, uh, uh, has a lot of dust. So, yeah, I'm not sure how long it's going to take to clean up, but uh, for sure, they're going to spend most of the weekend cleaning it up. 36 degrees air temperature, uh, sorry, track temperature, air is at 34 degrees. Uh, not very humid though, which is nice. Most of the times last year when you have a hot form race, it's humid as well, but very pleasant conditions here. As you might have just seen, free practice won't start on time. We're imagining a 15 minute delay approximately. So uh, we should be starting fairly soon. Here's yeah. a look at the uh, final corner at turn 18. And there's the pit lane on the on the right hand side. And uh, yeah, it's quite it's a it's a cool circuit. I think it's nice and big and wide in places, but sort of tight and twisty and narrow in that in that middle sector. It's good stuff. 
Yeah, no, I think um, I'd be interested to see when the when the weekend unfolds and we get more cars on track and they start to clear off some of this dust, <coughs> you know, how, how that impacts the racing. I think it'll be quite helpful, actually, if, if we get some people driving offline <laughs> down to turn three. I don't think anyone will, <laughs> but if we can convince some of them to go offline um, down to turn three, that'll help some of the, uh, the racing and overtaking. Jean-Eric Verne and Stoffel van Dorn in the back of the DS Penske garage. I spoke a little bit with uh, Oli and uh, he was pretty excited with the track. Said it's going to be a bit dirty in the beginning, but once it gets uh, cleaned up, um, it's going to be one of those high speed, taking a bit of risk track, which uh, it's going to be fun to see the drivers uh, trying to uh, use the most out of, out of the tracks, out of the cars. Um, because it's going to be, you're going to have to have a bit of guts in this one over here, I think, a couple of corners. Yeah, absolutely. Oliver Turvey, the reserve driver for DS Penske. Jake Dennis at Avalanche Andretti, second in the championship. And there's, we had Oliver Askew with us for the first couple of races. And uh, yeah, I've never seen Jake's hair look that bad, honestly. He's normally quite well groomed, but it's a bit of a shunt hair wise. Uh, the um, Askew says he sees a different Jake. Dennis this year it's just not you know hugely different but just that little bit more focus because he came in as a rookie nothing to lose was in cha championship contention last year didn't have the the car to be fighting at the front but this year it's it's, it's a title fight and, and he's slightly a bit more serious because of it I think he's done a, a really good job hasn't he I think um, if you look at the the race in Saudi he was starting 11th on the grid and just calmly picked his way through the pack you know it, it, he knows he's in a championship fight he didn't didn't go for a risky move damage the front wing none of that stuff he just thought right i need to make sure i get the maximum amount of points and worked his way up yeah jake dennis and jake hughes both of them they're really really impressing me so i think uh, they're the two drivers to for sure for us to keep an eye on uh, i think they're going to be the two contenders especially jake hughes with, with the with the McLaren, I think uh, he he's showing a lot of improvement, uh, maturity, speed. Um, so yeah, I um, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep a close eye on him. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Lucas Degrassi for Mahindra. Big weekend for Mahindra actually, being a, an Indian manufacturer. Lots of dinners for Degrassi to uh, to attend to. Uh, arrived at the hotel the other night to find him all suited and booted and ready to go. And uh, this is a look at the circuit. And this is uh, coming around that sort of sweeping section, I think, of turns 12 and would 13. It might be 14. Would it's you always difficult with a new track. Would you go on that big slide, Jack? Yeah, I'd like to I see you go on that it's big slide. It's not that big. Yeah. I was, is it a water slide? Or is it just a regular slide? I think it's water slide. Yeah, I'd do that. So we'll, while there's a delay, we'll all go on the slide. Go on the slide. For, exactly. For no, fun. this is... Uh, NTR Gardens, which has got all sorts of a big bucket of ice. In. Yeah, that'll be good. And uh, you can see here, right by the sort of edges of the, so they had the track cleaners out a it little. It seems much, seems much cleaner already. Yeah, um, but they had the track cleaners out to uh, to try and do some uh, help in between shakedown and FP1. But you can see the leaves and stuff off offline. All the trees around the track. It seems uh, reminds us a little bit of. London or the yeah. Battersea Park, uh, maybe a bit wider than Battersea Park. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it couldn't be any narrower. Yeah. <laughs> um, and there's the look at the, the city itself. We're about 30 minutes on a good tuk-tuk run from Charminar and the, and the center of the city. And this mall here on the left-hand side. And this is the sort of final chicane with the, the pit lane entry there on the right. You've been uh, enjoying the the food and the sight of Hyderabad, haven't you, uh, Jack? Paneer tikka pizza. Paneer uh, tikka pizza. Yeah, that's what I had last night. <laughs> <laughs> an, an Indian classic, no? <laughs> have I been doing this wrong? <laughs> uh, I suppose the Italians have Indianized <laughs> pizza when they come here. No, I also had some really spicy chicken stuff, which I can't remember what it was. And uh, going for biryani tonight. Very good. Very so good. To, the, to, the, to a famous biryani place. Apparently, so looking forward to looking forward to that. Uh, Kelvin van der Linde, then, who is uh, the South African in at the app team. It was his debut in Diria, so he's trying to get up to speed as quickly as possible. I'm interested to see what he can do here because you know he's got one weekend under his belt. 
So he's sort of only one race behind uh, his teammate Nico Muller in terms of actual race experience with this car. And there is Jake Hughes, who Nelson was discussing earlier, and especially in qualifying career, he's been a bit of a revelation almost. Yeah, he's been really, really, really impressive. Um, I think top three in all three qualifyings, isn't it? Which for a rookie is yeah. is really strong. Um, I think the McLaren is, we saw in Saudi, didn't we, Jack, when we were looking on the, the, the pad side by side, they're very good on the brakes. They've got really good braking stability. They're able to trail the brakes in, which I think with a with a hand-cooked tire in particular, that's a, quite an advantage. And uh, yeah, but he, he's, he's putting the lap together and qualifying. Interesting that Hughes is all ready to go, but some of the other uh, gang are just sitting around chilling. Oh, Nato's getting ready to go now. The uh, Frenchman for the Nissan team. Nissan struggling a little. They've got the same powertrain as McLaren, but currently only have one points finish, which was Sasha Fenestraz's eighth place last time out. Has won a race, Norman Nato, in the final race of season eight in Berlin as he gets ready to hop in the car and get it going for this uh, first half-hour practice session. And Sebastian Buemi, too. Lovely to see Buemi back at the front, Karun, isn't it? It's lovely for him. <laughs> I'm sure he's, <laughs> you know, he's, uh, yeah, you know, he looked very happy in Saudi, didn't he? <laughs> Did a good job in qualifying to get to get pole position there. Um, I think the didn't quite have the pace today in the race compared to Jake Dennis and, and Pascal Wehrlein, but yeah, I'm sure he, uh, he'll be happy with that. Yeah, Jaguar powertrains for uh, them this year, hence the Jaguar chap sitting over on the left-hand side there. Nico Muller in the other Apt Cupra, uh, yet to get off the mark this season, Apt Cupra, and uh, Muller has actually DNF'd in both races in uh, Diria. Hit the wall as well in, I think, uh, qualifying. Or, so, or maybe, no, I think it was um, it was free practice he hit the wall and then missed qualifying, but he'll be hoping to get going again. They haven't decided yet who is racing in Cape Town. Apt are going to be taking that decision. They might have said, they might have said uh, today that they were going to make that decision. I'll just have a look at that. But Evans is chill. He's in no rush. What would, what would you be doing now, Nelson? Would you be sitting in the car waiting like Jake Hughes or scrolling Instagram like Mitch Evans? Depends how long this is going to take. I'm sure some of the drivers know it's going to take long. Um, I, I think he just noticed the camera was following, was, <laughs> was chasing him, so he just dropped the phone very quickly over there. <laughs> Let's me focus on the car right you'd, now. You'd be napping. You were very good at just, just having your power naps. I, when you're I, I like napping. It just depends on the on the jet lag. Like I was napping ten minutes ago, but that was just because it was uh, four minutes uh, ago. I said. <laughs> <laughs> we we were joking. Saying it's been twenty years since we did F three together. Twenty I'll, I'll, years. But I'll never forget. We were in. Uh, in I was doing F three when I was five years old. Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> we we were in Pembury one day, and he was asleep in the car, like in between runs. It's just like quick power nap. It's amazing. Anyway, yes, look at uh, Charminar down in the the centre of town, famous for its bangles. There's the Buddha statue out on the lake, built in the early 1990s and yeah a really really cool city this there on the top of the hill Villa Mandir the Hindu temple built in 1976 you can get involved this weekend as well by scanning the QR code on the left and play Formula E predictor that'll take you to the to the Formula E app where you can get involved in the in the predictor uh, so we're hoping that the session will be starting soonish and uh, you can see this is the uh, roundabout at turn 18 with the Indra Gandhi statue in the middle. That's where the podium is going to be at the end of the, the race as well. And that's the final corner at, at turn 18. Uh, I was going to find out in between sessions, but by finding out it was going to be asking you, so I'll just ask you on air. Is this the first street circuit race in India or did they have they raced on streets before? I, I would say it's the first international street race yeah. in India. Um, we actually had a street race in, in Calcutta back in 2004 or really? five, a national racing event. Really? Yeah, it was when they were building a new highway um, in Calcutta, but um, yeah, it was for a small national yeah. series. So th this is, I would say, the first proper in international level street circuit. Yeah, Dan Tictum now getting in, who's been uh, very impressive in qualifying. The Neo not necessarily having the 
uh, speed. Uh, but it, it is one of the most good-looking cars on the grid. I oh, love you like the, it? I love the livery. I really like it. It's very funky. It goes nicely with Tickton's helmet as well. <laughs> and that uh, lovely color on the, um, the interior. On the interior as well. Great. Well, about great fashion sense, but like really interesting fashion sense. Oh, back Tickton. out. You, um, you've been shopping with Dan, haven't you? <laughs> I feel like you and he. No, I have not. I would like you to do and that he actually. going shopping would be a very funny day out. I got just to send a camera to follow you to. I would love to do that. There's Antonio Felix da Costa. I got slated on the flight out here for my trainers. Everyone was laughing at me for my trainers because they're an old, but not these ones, <laughs> but uh, these other ones I wore. Apparently, they're a really old man brand that I was wearing, and everyone was rinsing me for it. Well, should we post a picture online for the, you know, for the for the millions of people listening to us at the moment, <laughs> we, can, we can show them uh, what, what uh, yeah. Well, I thought they're, they're, they're nice, comfy slip-ons. I don't really understand the. We got Nikki and Saunders Ni at the back of the well, gallery. Uh, Nikki Shields is arriving right in her heads. bathroom slippers today. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so no, I would love to do a shopping trip with Dan Tickton. I think that would be great. Hashtag content. There's Nick Cassidy getting ready to head out in the Envision. Hasn't quite managed to uh, hook it up yet this season. Buemi third in the championship. Cassidy currently 10th. Uh, he's made it into the final of the of qualifying twice and won six duels, but hasn't had a podium. I don't think he's had a podium since his win in New York City last year, Nick Cassidy, in those bizarre circumstances when he, uh, when he crashed out from the lead in the rain, but the, the red flag was flown. Max Gunter in the Maserati MSG sitting at the wheel and ready to go out as well. Uh, as I say, he got Maserati all teams, off the mark. Here's Scott Elkins. Um, we unfortunately have a further delay, a further delay. Our estimated time now for the start of the session is 1700. Estimated time for the start of the session is 1700. I'll uh, give you further updates. Okay, so uh, a further delay. Uh, Scott Elkins there in the in the middle, and uh, so another 15 minutes or so before we hopefully will be getting underway. And Gunter, having just got in, maybe we'll get out again. There's the Hancock tyres that are going to be crucial this weekend. Sergio said a camera, hopping out. And, uh, <laughs> he was just about ready to go, Sergio. Do you know Sergio City Camera at all? You come across, or not really much? Uh, different generations. I mean, obviously well, we obviously. know each other <laughs> from Brazil. Not that much. <laughs> <laughs> Karun was lying about this 20 years ago, <laughs> racing together. I don't know where he's getting that from. But, um, yeah, no, I mean, you know him from a couple of uh, Porsche races in Brazil. He's done endurance races that sometimes he's, he's been, yeah, but... Um, He's a little bit younger than me. Yeah. Months. Yeah, maybe a year or two. <laughs> Andre Lotterer. They, he's your generation, surely. He's older than us. He's older. Really? Look how much white hair he has. <laughs> <laughs> uh, getting frustrated and uh, ready to head out. Uh, never been to India before, um, Andre Lotterer. But he's had, well, he had uh, his teammate Lorraine Kardakayan in the World Endurance Championship. And uh, Neil Jani, as well, he was teammates with, who's uh, got an Indian mother, I believe, Neil Jani. I mean, you were clutching for some tenuous no, Indian him. link that set, aren't you? Anyway, like. we've got to go down to Radzi. <laughs> I'm currently stood just in the pit lane here, just outside Neo, and I have to say, the work that's been done over the course of the last 48 hours has been absolutely fantastic here. Just as we find out there's been a bit of a delay to FP1, a lot of the drivers taking the opportunity to hydrate themselves, the teams having yet more time to make the final preparations needed. As I sort of look around here, the sights and the sounds of Hyderabad have been absolutely fantastic. The people are so much behind this incredible inaugural event here in Hyderabad and indeed in India, the first time that Formula E takes place here. And as I look at the, what will eventually be where the presentations are made with the drivers that come first, second and third in just about 24 hours time. That has transformed. It was a working roundabout 
yesterday, in fact, the taxis have been parking, dropping people off there, but now it's all dedicated. It is about a track. It is about making drama, making history. And it's safe to say all the teams here, it's a big unknown here, but that's what makes it so, so exciting. We don't know what to expect, but if we do know anything about Formula E, it is expect the unexpected because the drama always delivers on the track. Will we see the Porsche powertrain dominate once again? It's what a lot of people are talking about. Or could it be the fairy tale? Could Mahindra, in fact, manage to get themselves on the podium? What a moment that would be for the country and indeed the Mahindra team. Just being here, there's a real sense of fervor and excitement. And this might be FP1 now, then FP2 tomorrow morning. When quali happens, followed by the race, it's safe to say it is going to be something special. Yeah, really looking forward to it. And uh, in fact, just landing at the airport, it's Formula E signage everywhere. Uh, Nick Heidfeld hanging around this weekend, uh, chatting to Oliver Rowland. Heidfeld, a former Mahindra driver um, and uh, was still part of the team the last few years, having a chat with Rowland, who's got his sort of ice vesty thing on. Although it looks like a used bulletproof vest, really, doesn't it? With all the little holes in it. but. Keeping cool, Oliver Rowland in the back of the Mahindra garage. And they haven't had a, well, Degrassi had that third place in, in Mexico City, but um, no points so yet for Oliver Rowland. As Hyde Felt, who has the joint record with Andre Lotterer for the most Formula E podiums without a win. They are joint on eight on that. Doesn't he hold the F1 record? I think he has the F1 record for as well. For most podiums without a win. Yeah. I think he's got... I think, I think he could be right. So, yeah, I think he's got it in both series, which is impressive. It's something. So, we've got uh, course cars on track. So, hopefully, that means we're close enough or closer to getting underway. Uh, hashtag Hyderabad e of course, if you want to get in touch over the course of the of the weekend always good to hear from you guys this is up towards the pit lane chicane at the and this is where the, so the grid hatchings here are sort of for the for the for the dummy grid um, before they will then make their way around to the actual start grid which is uh, just out through these next couple of corners as I say we uh, should be getting underway in around about 10 minutes time or so. There you can see another of the course cars just waiting over at the side. Fred Bertrand, a busy weekend for him. It's the first time I've seen him not in a dinner jacket off to a dinner. But uh, super difficult track. He, he, uh, that's, that's the, the uh, powertrain partners, aren't they? The gentleman on the left from ZF. Ah, uh, yes. So. There's Neon McLaren. Wait, he's getting... Oh, interesting, their, uh, their clock's on their laptop still in English time. No. No, it's not. What time's that? Well, it's, what's like, it's like an hour, hour and, and a half, half out. out. <laughs> I think it's because... It's in Saudi Arabia time. Oh, yes. They haven't changed them since Saudi. They haven't changed the clocks since <laughs> Saudi Arabia. <laughs> you think they'll? Uh, <laughs> what? Yeah. That's not very. Uh, that's it's not very that's neon not very McLaren. Neon is McLaren. <laughs> yeah. Is Rene Rast? It's not very German. I bet his clocks the right time. Yeah. No. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, this was a little look back at some of the action in Shakedown earlier on today. Very uh, short session and untimed, but just to give the drivers a first view of the circuit. De Costa, Jake Dennis, Jake Hughes, Sam Bird. Out they went onto a very dusty circuit, very tentative in the early stages. That's the very quick Sagar chicane. This is the pitch chicane right at the end of the lap. Jake Dennis was rally crossing his way around trying to find some grip out there. Sergio said he camera out, braked himself into the hairpin at turn three. Not quite as much as Kelvin van der Linde though. It looked like software problems and van der Linde crunching into the barriers. In a very strange scenario, Degrassi was getting loose and cut the corner. 
And then van der Linde had the same problem again at the same corner. But hopefully, ooh, some rowing. You a rower? Uh, I used to, yeah. I've got, I mean, now I have a rowing machine because I live in England and it's cold <laughs> and raining all the time. But I, <laughs> what, but, the place but, with the I most famous rowing race in the world? Yeah, but I didn't go to Oxford or Cambridge. Did you not? <laughs> uh, very sustainable transport as well. Oh, we used to, did you, you used to live in Oxford when we were doing F3? Uh, no, Brackley. Ah. I wasn't rich enough to live in Oxford. I lived. <laughs> 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 so uh, there's Florian Modlinger then at the, at the Porsche team. And I mean, what a job. They, they had maybe, well, not under-delivered, but they were, they, were, they were putting a lot of pressure on themselves this season because they joined Gen 2 a year late, were always on the back foot, and there was all this talk of this, is, you know, this year we're on the same level playing field. So they kind of had to deliver, and then they have so far. But, I mean, when Porsche arrives in any category, you expect them to be successful, don't you? Yeah. Like, you expect them to be investing and, and getting the right people and the right drivers and the right team to, to win. So I think you're right. Yeah, I think they did under-deliver mm. in Gen 2. And actually what we're seeing now is what we expect from a, from a you know, historic motorsport brand like Porsche. So we hopefully have around about 10 minutes before free practice uh, finally begins here in Hyderabad. Free practice 2 getting underway tomorrow morning at uh, about 8 o'clock local time. And then the race at 3 o'clock local time with qualifying in the middle. Eduardo Mortara and his funky lid waiting to take to the track. Difficult weekend for Maserati in Diria, even though they did manage to pick up that ninth place finish with Eduardo Mortara. Not exactly what they hoped for coming into the season, having topped the pre-season testing times in Valencia. And uh, I think to Costas, he's always happy, isn't he? It's quite, uh, it's quite interesting. But speaking of uh, cheeky, chirpy chappies, we can, we can head down to the pit lane and speak to maybe the chirpiest chap on the grid. He's uh, down in the pit lane with Radzi. At home, you can try and guess who I'm talking about. See if you get it right. Radzi. I've just I've walked, walked past the Neo 33 garage. I've bumped into Dan Tickton. He's very kindly given up a minute of his time. Dan, this delay, not ideal. How is it from a driving standpoint dealing with these delays? Um, I mean, you just prepare, obviously, and then it gets delayed. I mean, it's not a massive difference for us. Um, you know, nothing on the track's going to change too much. I mean, it would be nice if we had some information as to what the delay is, but at the moment, I know nothing. But yeah, I've got to hop in uh, shortly, so. And I saw you on the Zoom to somebody. Cle clearly, you are very chilled right now. Yeah, yeah, very relaxed. Yeah, I'm. Mean, to be honest, people get the, get the wrong get the wrong impression of me. But to be honest, I'm quite chilled most of the time. We'd love to see you quality like you managed to the last couple of races, mate. Good luck for this one. I'd hope so. Thank you very much. Cheers. So Dan Tickton. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but he's. I. I, I, I uh, yeah, a lot of time for Dan Tickton actually. A lot of time for him. He's the only driver, well, no, he's not the only, but one of the only drivers where you're sitting at lunch and he just comes and sits next to you, doesn't he? Like every lunchtime. Maybe he's just got. Maybe he just likes you, Jack. Have you thought no. about that? Uh, yeah, I've thought about that and pretty swiftly discounted that as the, as the possibility. Uh, but he's been very impressive this year, Tickton, particularly in qualifying. So we uh, hopefully will be getting underway fairly shortly here. Still the estimated start time being shown as five o'clock local time. Now, Karun, this is a lap from Shakedown earlier on, so it's not full power, but it's Sebastian Buebi heading into turns one and two. Yeah, it is. Um, it's be quite early on the power there to, to try and get a good exit for this long straight. Um, as you were saying before, I think it's one of the longest runs we get on the calendar. Um, a bit of movement under braking, the back of the car not particularly uh, gripped up at this early stage, all the, the dust Still on the track, through the, the little kinks, um, I turn four or five, there's a car on the left-hand side, off the line, who's about oh. to block us, oh yes, arm wave, classic arm wave from uh, Wemi, <laughs> how many times have we seen that <laughs> in the last eight years, um, into this uh, th this flowing sector now, this this is going to be tricky I think for the drivers, 
one of the challenges they've talked about in the first three races is how braking and turning is really challenging uh, at the moment with the with the current Hankook tyres. And again, here, this coming up into the chicane, you've got uh, another sec sequence of corners where turns was it, up into 12 um, and 13, where you've got a break and turn. And that is, I think we're going to see some some differences uh, in terms of car performance and also the way the drivers approach it. But up towards the last chicane, pretty neat and tidy. And then uh, the last corner. So that is the lap. And then the timing line is just here. That is a lap of the uh, Hyderabad street circuit. As he crunches over those curbs again. Down at the chicane, Sebastian Buemi. Number 16, I keep meaning to ask why he's number 16 this weekend, but, uh, well, every weekend uh, Attention all teams, attention all teams, this is race control. Unfortunately, we have another delay. Our next target time for the start of the Our session is 17.15. start of the session is 17.15. Sincere apologies. 17.15. Obviously, we're working on some other things, so. I will give you an update as soon as we have information. So, a little bit more of a delay. Got another 20 minutes or so until hopefully we get uh, free practice underway. And <laughs> Boemi shakes his head. He just got all strapped in as well. As I say, there's a look at the Pulamandia Temple at the top of the hill. You can get involved in the formulary predictor if you want. Scan the scan the QR code and and uh, get stuck in. Uh, I'm about to ask a very stupid question, Karim, but I haven't I haven't looked it up. Did you did you did you race in India growing up, or did you move straight to Europe, or what was your vibe? Uh, I did one year of racing in India. So and the last time I uh, yeah uh, I was 16 years old. The last time I <laughs> really? raced in India. Yeah. Wow. Um, what was that in? In uh, Formula Maruti. It's a little 800cc single-seater category that we have here in uh, in India, as an oh we had here in India. Yeah. Um, and there's a there's a racetrack in Chennai. There's a permanent racetrack in Chennai which runs. Uh, in fact, you've commentated there on, on a number there a of occasions. Of yeah. Um, yeah. So that's that's where I saw it. Nice. Then you moved to England to Race. meet up with me. <laughs> yeah, and then it got problematic because you were a bit too quick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a look at, uh, as I say, some of the the, the downtown Charminar area. Famous for its bangles. Hyderabad famous for its pearl industry. Not the pearls themselves, but the, the, the machining of the pearls is what Hyderabad is famous for. One of the things. Anyway, and uh, lots of man-made lakes around here. And there's one of the flyovers and uh, you won seven out of ten races in I, in I formula did, maruti don't sound so shocked no that's good effort <laughs> thanks Jack. in the year 2000 scored and you pole in every race you stop sounding so shocked Jack. No, no, just talk about something it was else a whitewash <laughs> here's a lot here's a few shots from shakedown earlier on uh, max gunter in the maserati Coming through that quick sequence at 12 and 13. On the run down towards turn 14 here, van der Linde wrestling the car a little. And I would suggest maybe understeering the car a little as he gets on the dirty stuff. Hey, attention all teams, this is Race Control is again. Just to kind of answer a bunch of emails that are flowing through. Um, once the session begins, um, we'll try to stick to the schedule of having the driver's briefing 45 minutes after the end of the session. Um, and we'll also uh, have a respective curfew adjustment as well. Um, but obviously until the session starts, we can't provide those specific times. So. We're aware of, uh, of those two things that need to be adjusted and to know that we're, we're keeping those in mind, but we can't really define them until we get started, so thanks. Scott Elkins answers his emails. Send him one. There we go. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I have his, uh, 
don't think I have his email. I'll tell you what you can do. You can send Ian James an email and ask him uh, why their clocks yeah, are wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, there's a look at the Neon McLaren coming through. Sergio Sede camera as well. 2001 Formula Asia champion as well, 2001. Are you on Wikipedia? This is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going through your, your career now. I've never got... And then it 2002 British F3. So... That's it. And then I know the rest oh, of the, you know, off the top of my head by heart. But it's just the early years I wasn't, uh, I wasn't sure of. Uh, Pascal Verline, there coming through in the Porsche, the championship leader coming into this race in Hyderabad. Some more rowing. Great stuff. Now, we're going to head back down to the pit lane, join Radzi, who's with Oliver Turvey. Well, I'm, well, I'm delighted, delighted to be joined, to be joined by, by Oliver Turvey. Turvey. Um, right outside of DS Pence, because we stand here as a reserve driver and a sporting advisor, perfect person to talk about the delays that are happening here. But specifically, India, it's the inaugural E-Pri. How exciting is this for the guys? Yeah, definitely. It's uh, very exciting to be have a new race here in India, in, in Hyderabad. Um, I've put on a fantastic track. I think it's a really challenging one, so some fast, fast sections, some very flowing corners. So, um, yeah, and, uh, challenging conditions out there, uh, also in shakedown. So, um, yeah, we'll see how it goes in FP1. When you don't have much data going into a track like this and it is unknown, how do you cope with that as a driver? Is that something that's exciting? Yeah, definitely. It's always exciting going to new tracks. I think, you know, sometimes the, the, the drivers can make a difference learning the track quickly. Um, both our guys have always been straight on the pace in free practice. So, yeah, I think um, we did a lot of work last week on the simulator as well. Um, so, you know, the team have been working hard uh, trying to improve and, uh, you know, hopefully we can have a strong weekend. And in, and in terms of this weekend, what would success possibly look like for yourselves? For these guys, they want to win. You know, they won the championship a few times, and um, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely they. You know, both of them want to be winning races. So uh, certainly, if we can be on the podium and uh, hopefully on the top step. Oliver, thanks for your time. Thanks. So Oliver Turvey, former teammate of yours, Oliver Turvey. You chatted. Oh yeah, you said you had a little chat with him earlier. Yeah, it was the first guy that I uh, bumped into ah. this morning over here. So shame he's not racing this year. Um, such a good driver, good talent. Um, yeah, shame. Hopefully, see him back in the car. Um, I even thought that he was maybe going to replace uh, Robin Frins after yeah. the Mexico incident. But um, I think teams are getting pretty serious about this uh, test driver role and not being able to drive different cars. And, yeah. Uh, but he would have been uh, would have been good for him. Otherwise, in a normal scenario, if you lose it, like in Barcelona. You go out with a new tire on the out lap and then you go for an old tire, you can see the trend. But I cannot see the option. I, I try to overlay your Talking about something with the, with the tires, Lucas Degrassi and uh, Oliver Rowland, fascinated by what he's got to say. Let's go back down to Radzi. Well, I'm currently outside the Neo 332 garage with Sergio set to camera. Sergio, these delays are very frustrating, but how are you feeling about competing in India? Well, it's a new track, it's exciting. There was a lot of dust out there uh, the first time out uh, during shakedown. Uh, but it, it cleaned up very fast. I'm expecting the grip to increase fairly quickly. And it's a fun track. I think once the grip is there, we'll put, have some speed in the corners and have some good fun. Plenty of overtaking opportunities and hopefully it's a good one for me. I, I'm taking this round as a round to really build confidence and restart the season. I guess in some respects it's restarting for everyone. It's a new track. How do you deal with a new track? You, you just do the same, but more, a bit more intense. Uh, so, of course, you know less, so everything has more weight uh, on the preparation side. So the simulator, the track walk, you've got to do some, that has some extra value when you've never been to that track in real life. So that's the main difference. A lot of excitement here. There'll be as much excitement in South Africa, another new track. And the third new track is one that you're going to know pretty well. It's going to be in Brazil, homecoming for yourself. I think it, people will be surprised, like how, how much uh, Brazilian people will welcome Formula E. Uh, motorsports is ingrained in our culture. People are very excited about everything. Sao Paulo is a great city, plenty of restaurants, uh, things, j just things to do. So any, anyone that joins for the race will have a good time. Thanks for today. Go well today. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah, looking forward to Sao Paulo. Uh, set a camera from <laughs> Belo Horizonte. Hey, Karun, give him your, give him your headset. Come on, you've got, you got nothing else to do. So we've been joined now by Jean-Eric Verne the two-time champion from DS Penske. How are you doing? Very good. What's going on? We just, we just spoke Waiting. to Sergio Sede Camera, yeah. <laughs> but there was still another delay? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not starting. No, uh, currently 5.15. 5.15. The uh, 
Free Practice 1 has been delayed. This is official uh, what the reason. Free Practice 1 has been delayed while local authorities resolved an operational issue on the roads around the track. So there you go. Dirty track, dusty Welcome track to earlier. India. Yeah. What do you think of the track? Uh, track looks cool. I mean, the layout is nice. Um, just uh, extremely dirty. Um, I've, I've never seen that in, in my history in, in Formula E, so <laughs> I don't think they have the machine to clean the track, though. So yeah. it's going to be complicated. <laughs> and you've raced in India before, yeah? Yeah, in F1. Yeah. That was okay. Ish. Cool, great answer. <laughs> Thanks. You can go now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see you guys. Have fun. <laughs> yeah, have a nice practice session. So, uh, John McVern popping in for a minute. That's not really what he signed up for, but. Uh, got to be done and um, yeah I can't remember what he uh, I'll look up jean Eric Verne's Indian Grand Prix results shall I the, the answers that everyone knows unless you know that off the top of your head oh Karim's eating now Slight sorry delay I, mi I missed lunch so <laughs> uh, so hopefully we should be getting underway soon I know I've been telling you guys that for 35 minutes but uh, it does seem like we are we're getting towards that kind of way, and um, as the sun begins, the sun sets at quarter past six here, actually. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, India, it's sort of, isn't it the widest country on one time zone or something? We, I think we should have had two time zones, because really? it, if you look at the difference of when sunset is, where um, on the west coast versus the east coast, it's like 90 minutes. Yeah. You know, it's a huge difference. Um, and, and I think, I, I don't know this for a fact, and I'm sure um, some one of our listeners will correct me on Twitter or something, but <laughs> I think we should have had two time zones. They couldn't decide and agree that that was the case. Oh, so they, the, they went for the half. Th that's what, really? <laughs> so we have a half, yeah. So it was like, should we do five or six? Ah. I don't know how many other countries have a half hour. I don't think I mean, I well, You guys have a half hour over here. I mean, you've only been here a day, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's, it's five and a half hours to the UK, for example. Or four and a half hours to to Europe. Yeah. Or I don't know how many. It's probably eleven and a half to. Um, it's true. I just I just noticed that right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's I can't believe it. Yeah. I think it's the only country. It's the only country I've been to. Same. No, I, I think there's something in uh, Central America, perhaps. Okay. Maybe. That's, uh, I just noticed that. I'm telling. You, yeah. I'm jet lagged. So still half. Uh, Half in Brazil, half here. Just noticed that. Because I, I looked at my world clock over here, and I see all the times. They all have the same minute over here. But I d obviously, I don't have the India. local. But I have New Delhi over here, yeah. then yeah, then there's... Wow. There you go. You learn something new every learn day, Nelson. something. Thank you very much, Karum. Jean-Eric Verne finished 15th and 13th in his two appearances at the Indian Grand Prix. Oh, apparently... Uh, Anna's been in touch saying Adelaide has a half-hour time difference to the to the East Coast, to Melbourne and Sydney. Just a half-hour. That's remarkable. Not even an hour and a half. Uh, here's a look at Degrassi going around in shakedown earlier on today. Down in towards the Sagar Chicane. Attacking the curbs. Bit of a slide on the exit. You can see when the, when the other drivers go offline, it's like they're, you know, it does seem more dusty than, than Punta, doesn't yeah. it? Like, and we were on the beach there. Yeah. It, which was... Um, that was quite cool, actually, because you, you literally had your debrief standing in the sand. Did that you was really? amazing. We yeah, went to the amazing. beach. We I went to the beach after practice. It was amazing. <laughs> it was beautiful. And Jack was in the casino, obviously, but... Um, no! That was season two. I didn't have any money to gamble, actually. Attention all teams. Uh, Attention all teams. This is race control. Oh, he sounds happy. We have just been yes. informed that we will go on time at 17.15. 17.15 will be the start of free practice. On time. One. Yeah, loose, loose use of the word on time, but we'll take it. So quarter past five. This is uh, Degrassi coming down now into turn 14. Uh, a little bit earlier on today. And then the final chicane at... 16 and 17, and out into the final corner. Exactly five minutes to yeah. start. Exactly. Me and my half an hour delayed watch. <laughs> <laughs> so five minutes till the session gets underway, and that is fact. 
Ah, I've committed to that, but it, it's looking really, really likely as uh, Degrassi gets suited and ready to head out. Roland coming out too. And yeah, four and a half minutes now until the session begins. I'm not going to do quite such an elaborate. You were doing countdown, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like I mean, Nikki's like jumping up and down with excitement at the back of our commentary box. She can't yeah. wait for this. Buzzing. <laughs> Four minutes and ten seconds till the session gets underway. Rene Rass getting strapped in as well. Dan Tictum, I think, is the only driver on the grid to have raced in Chennai. Yes. At the Madras Motorsports yeah. Park. I believe, I believe so, isn't it? I, I can't I'm think of anyone else no. who would have done. He raced there in the Formula MRF Challenge back in the day. I think he might have. Did he win? I can't remember. I don't think I did that one, actually. I was trying to wonder whether either Jake Dennis or Jake Hughes came, but I, I don't think they did. No, I, I, I don't believe so. Um, did he win it? Mm, no, it doesn't look like he did. But uh, Sam Bird getting ready to head out, fourth in the championship. And 101 races under his belt. And this is going to be his, well, it's the 27th city for Formula E. But Bird will have missed um, uh, Seoul. So it's going to be his 26th. But both Buemi and uh, Vern and Degrassi would have been to all race venues, I believe. But that's just off the top of my head. Vern missed the first race. And yeah. Then he, he met us at Punta. 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 But he then would have done Beijing and Putrajaya the next year. Yeah, yeah. So I think he's done all of the tracks, as it were, even if he hasn't done all of the the races. Stuck it on pole on his uh, on his debut, did. Jean-Eric Verne in, in Punta del Este and what was a very impressive achievement. Uh, three minutes now, well, two and a half minutes till the session gets underway. And looking forward to these drivers getting stuck in because, again, in the shakedown session earlier on, it's a, it's a fairly short session and they're limited on the power that they can use and the track was pretty dirty. So um, it'll be good to, to see them go for it a little bit more. It was the... Tictum did it in 2016-17. So who won? That was a, the Harry Newey, Harry Newey year in the MRF Challenge. Oh, maybe I did do that one. Harry Newey and Joey Mawson. I feel like maybe I did do that season. Oh, Tictum only did. The, anyway, are you just talking to yourself? I mean, well, that's well, no. <laughs> that's what he's paid for. <laughs> have you yeah. told him about his clocks yet, Ian no, James on our screen? I haven't. Go I on, don't text have him now. Okay. Well, I won't text him. I'll text the guy sitting next to him. Why haven't you changed your? There's James Rossiter. And uh, envisions Sylvain Filippi, the team principal and CTO. And Mike Lug sitting next to him on the right hand side. Roger Griffiths keeping his energy up at Avalanche Andretti. And uh, Thomas Biermeyer there on the right hand side. Fred Espinos on the left at Apt. One minute until the pit lane opens and we get running underway and as you can see lots of shadows now starting to appear around the place so I say we're only an hour from from uh, sunset here but we are 40 seconds from the session getting underway Fred Bertrand the CEO at Mahindra Racing 30 seconds Sebastian Buemi about to head out in the Envision are you, were you fine with delays, Karun, or does it put you off your stride in any way, or it's just frustrating more than anything? It just is what it is, isn't it? You know, I think as, um, there's nothing you can do about it, so you just, yeah, you just get on with it. <laughs> I mean, what, what do you do? You know, yeah. I think the worst ones. But some are, people, some drivers no, get a bit worked I up. I think the worst ones are when you get a red flag in the middle of the race. Like if you've done right. a bit of the race, and then it's red flagged in the middle, um, and you have to get going again, then it's tricky, right? Because you're Especially if you're in a good position or a good rhythm or yeah, exactly. things are going well. Exactly. You know, you're in a flow and then it's it's quite tricky then. 
Right, here we go then. Thank you very much for sticking with us. Free practice one getting underway here in Hyderabad for the 2023 Green Co. Hyderabad e -Pri. Much cleaner already. Yeah. It d does look a lot cleaner, doesn't it? Uh, they were cleaning the track in between shakedown and practice. So hopefully it'll all be a little bit better as they come down now into turn three. This is down at Lumbini Park on the right-hand side. Gunter coming through there, followed by Eduardo Mortara. And then here comes Lucas Degrassi in the Mahindra. And uh, then it's the Nissan of Sasha Fenestras. Good to see that the apps are back out there. Kelvin van der Linde after his problem earlier on. but that's attack mode activation on the uh, outside of the left-hander hairpin at turn three. And then here we go into the chicane at turns 12 and 13, which then takes you into this right-hander of turn 14. Twenty-eight minutes and fifteen seconds to go. Here's Max Gunter then. Coming into turns one and two. Well, oh, quite wide there. The uh, at the Sagar Chicane. And then down into the hairpin. Twenty-seven and a half minutes to go, and uh, we've got a red flag. Okay, everyone, we've got a car. Drivers left. Drivers left at turn eighteen, just after the apex. Please be aware. Stay to the right. Ooh, stay to the right. It's Verline. It's the championship leader, Pascal Verline, in the wall at the final corner of turn eighteen, and that's a big hit for Verline. Front right and rear right both gone. Seems and the like red flag is out. Seems like he clipped, he clipped inside and went, went out. Wow. So Pascal Verline. Throttle got stuck. Front wing got stuck. Is that what he said? Yeah. So Pascal Verline in the barriers. And that is not the way that he wanted uh, this weekend to start, obviously. Fairly obvious thing to say, but good to hear him talking to Carl Wilson Clark on the radio. But that's turn 18, as you can see, the final corner on the circuit, the right hander. And just as everyone had got out onto the track, right here we go. There we go. Whoa! Ooh. Oh! That doesn't sound seem like driver error, does it? Like he was no. It was so I think he said I think he said throttle got stuck. And you can see, I think, yeah, it's like the wheels are still spinning as he kind of is having the yeah. rotation. That's a big hit. Yeah. That's a big hit. Um, so he's uh, taking the wheel off, Pascal Verlein, and we heard him speaking on the radio. But we'll see what damage that has done to the car. Because, OK, they've got all night now to... Uh, yeah, luckily. Luckily, it's been... Uh, First practice, if it was before qualifying, we had no chance he would qualify. Absolutely. So Pascal Verlein, the championship leader in the barriers. What a start to the weekend we're having here in Hyderabad. And uh, a little bit of a shake of the shoulder, as you would anticipate, because he has gone in pretty hard there, Pascal Verlein. Looking at the rear of the car. Well, wow, that was, uh, here we go. Yeah, it was Ooh, very yeah. strong. That's a really, really big one for for Verline. So maybe, maybe it was throttle then. Yeah, so. seems like it. So they'll, uh, I'm fairly sure, take him to the 
medical center for that one for a precautionary check. There's a there's a uh, a G-force sensor in the car, and if it hits a certain level, a sort of light activates, and, and you have to go to the medical center for a checkup. So I wouldn't be surprised I'm if he. Sure, all the lights were lit up over there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. So this is what happened. This was De Costa's view of it. He's he's running behind his teammate. There we go. It just kind of spits him out. It's a really weird one, isn't it? So, no one had even set the lap time at this point. Here he comes, full speed. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the speed he was coming in there. There's no that's way. That's not a driver error. Yeah, that's not a driver error for sure. Um, but I mean, that's the the, sh the, the impact. You know, goes into uh, the driver, right? Because yeah. it's a concrete block, they didn't, which is not they didn't moving. Even moving. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not like the, 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 you know, the metal barriers that have a bit of give. So uh, I'm glad to see he's up and walking, and uh, you know, the, the FIA medical delegates have, have checked him out. Let's try and listen. I think he's got the medical. He might have a sore morning. Just sit him tomorrow. down for a while. Just take him so that is his race engineer, Carl Wilson Clark, just saying, you know, check him out, and the, the light did go off on that uh, on that hit. So, well, now we will clear the wreckage. You can see on the left-hand side, it's already been cleared by the by the marshals here. 23 minutes and uh, zero seconds to go, and just when. Just when you thought that it would, well, just when the drivers thought they would be getting out and getting going again, it's a, uh, it's another delay. Not much damage to the, to wall, to the wall though. To be fair, is there? They're pretty strong concrete blocks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fair point. The marshals, by the way, Jack. All, uh, all local marshals. All people who have um, worked at other race events in India. Um, you know, it's not like some other events we go to around the world where they, they have to fly in marshals to support from other parts of the world. Mm. Um, yeah, these are all people who have uh, who've worked worked around the country in different uh, racing events. How, how, how many permanent racetracks are there in? Three now. Right. And so there's two more, there are two more being built. So what, speak. Chennai and Delhi? Chennai, Delhi, Coimbatore, and then there are, there's another one coming in Pune and a second one coming in Coimbatore. So yeah, we'll be up to five. Oh. Right, less than 22 minutes to go. In those first 55 minutes of filling, I feel like I've used most of my filling stuff, but we'll, we'll give it another go. Stoffel van Dorn, uh, reigning champion, only one point coming into this weekend and a, a real frustrating time for DS Penske because they appear to have a quick car underneath them. They're very, very quick in practice. In fact, I think they've been in the top four or five of uh, every practice session, but not been able to pull it out when qualifying happens. Okay, attention all teams, attention uh, all teams. This is race this control. Is this is a uh, one minute warning. A one control. minute warning. We're going to go green at 25. We're going to go green at 25. Thank you. Okay, very swift clear, very, very swift clearance from the marshals. Uh, but first of all, let's get a little update, shall we, from Radzi in the pits. Well, as Pascal Verlein made his way back to the Porsche garage, thankfully he walked out of the medical car and did walk very effectively back where he got attention from a lot of the team. Now, the update is that he's now receiving medical supervision, but he is okay, is what we understand. The big question is about the damage to the car. We're waiting to get an update on that one. The team seem fairly buoyant as things stand. Obviously, the first concern goes to the driver. And as we understand now, Pascal is OK. He's walking around. He's feeling good. He's in good spirits, which bodes well for potentially seeing him tomorrow and competing, as we know he can, because he's such an important part of this race, as is already shown with domination, with a first, second place, and two first places over in Diria. So, Verline, the championship leader, and uh, there is the car. It was a really heavy hit. 
Um, McLaren say that as the track gets back underway, McLaren say it's just, yeah, left over from, from Diria, those laptop clocks, but they will ensure that it's better tomorrow. So we'll see. Big promises from Neon McLaren. Right, cars on track again. Let's try this once more. Less than 20 minutes to go. As they stream out onto the circuit and head down towards turns one and two. And then this is the hairpin at turn three. Attack mode activation on the outside there. You're going to lose a lot of time by going through that attack mode. Well, yeah, I mean, look how far it is from the line. Mm. And also with, um, with the dust we're going to get collected offline. Uh, is is going to be, and it's one of the things we've seen this year, isn't it? Is that they're actually losing out, yeah, attack mode. Um, so losing track position and not really able to gain the time. Attention back. all teams! Attention all teams! This is race control. Full course yellow in three, two, this is just a practice, one. Everybody. Full course yellow. Full course yellow. So practice full course yellow. This is just a practice, like we do every every FP1. Nelson panicked and thought it was going to be another red flag. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Have to <laughs> like, the stories. It's getting dark already. <laughs> Jack, Nelson's ready for his nap. Sorry, Jack's got a list of dad jokes ready to go. <laughs> I don't do dad. Do I do dad jokes? I don't think I do dad. I wear dad trainers, but I don't, I don't do dad jokes. What's a guy who tells dad jokes but isn't a dad called? I don't know. Faux pas. Attention all teams. Attention all teams. This is race control. <laughs> Full course yellow ending in five, four, three, two. One green flag, green flag. Right. Let's get some green flag running then, shall we? 18 minutes to go in the session. Stoffel van Dorn. Well, he's just at the top of the times because of number order still. So uh, we're still yet to have a lap time put on the board yet as Hughes goes all over the place coming out of the chicane. The McLaren's still weaving around to try and get a bit of temperature into their tyres. And with the fact this is being run so late in the day, it's going to make it a bit unrepresentative in terms of track conditions for tomorrow, but then FP1 often is anyway, because it's so dirty. Well, being a new track, they have a lot to learn, limits of the track and the amount of energy that they're going to be re recovering and using for the simulation data. There's still a lot to learn, regardless if it's colder later during the day. I mean, uh, new tracks, every lap you do, you're learning, learning a little bit more. I thought it was an all right dad joke, by the way. Uh, Thanks. For those of you just joining, Karun Chandok and Nelson Piquet Jr. with me in commentary this weekend. As here's Sebastian Buemi in the Envision. And as I say, still no lap times on the board. Interestingly, De Costa Ooh. is in the pits as Buemi uh, starts to push it a little bit. But De Costa in the pits maybe as a bit of a precaution for the Porsche squad, considering that problem that. Pascal Verlein had. You so Mortara does a lap time, 1 minute 18.9. Yeah, it'd be interesting to get a word from Porsche um, and find out actually what, you know, whether they've got any understanding if that was a mechanical or a software is issue. Because if it, were, if it was a software issue, then you can get the Costa back on track pretty quickly. Mm. If it's a mechanical issue, then it's a bit different because you've got to go through it all and investigate it um, a bit more thoroughly. So you may not be able to get back on track and um, see Andre Lotra's in the pits as well obviously with the Porsche powertrain but Jake Dennis is on track so uh, yeah they haven't they haven't they're not in, concerned enough that they've they've stopped their customer cars yeah you see what I'm going with this yeah we'll see what happens with uh, with the Costa and so 15 minutes to go right here we go on board with Mitch Evans here in the Jaguar TCS getting a bit of sun in his eyes as he comes through. Whoa. <laughs> That's uh, that tricky middle sector. The back end's trying to swap around on him. Such a tricky tire and track. This is a wild ride on board with Evans. He completely missed that apex of nine. And this sector here, because there's one corner into the other, as soon as you're out of line for one, one bit, it really compromises the, uh, the next four or five corners. Hughes to the top of the times on a 17.4, but the lap times will just drop and drop as the session progresses. Uh, Dennis and Lotterer are both in the pits, so all of the 
Porsche cars in the pit lane. So that means that the second place man in the championship is uh, not going to get as much running as he would have liked in this session also. I wonder what they're going to do with track limits for that first chicane, actually. Yeah, uh, and I know in Formula E we don't often talk about track limits because normally it's a concrete block <laughs> that, yeah, that <laughs> defines the limit. Um, but I'm seeing lots of people doing different things in that first chicane, and I'm sure there's going to be... Uh, yeah, and the race, especially in the race. Oh, remember Mexico cutting the chicanes, you know, saving a lot of energy in the race. You, know, you lift off, you don't break, and then you let the cars come by again, whatever. I mean, that's that might be a bit of an issue during the race. Well, so, oh, so do you think, were, were people sort of pretending in Mexico? Oh, well, whoops, it, oh, I missed it the... happened several times, yeah. Really? Especially to, towards the end of the race where people were defending, and then it was, you know, they got tight into the corner, it was easier just to go straight. And then it was that whole conversation between the drivers and over drivers meeting that they were doing it in purpose because you would, obviously the apex speed was much higher, so you were spending much less energy to go back, get up to speed. So ongoing conversation that only happened for me because of the energy management. Yeah. So if it wasn't a, obviously combustion uh, series, that wouldn't be the case. But I remember Jano Trulli in Moscow. Do you remember him defending from the Costa and he just kept cutting the chicane and Oh, the back chicane, yeah. yeah. every time. 13 minutes and 20 seconds to go. Here's Tickton's radio. Main loss, turn one mid, 18 entry. Middle of turn one, so that's the chicane and uh, the entry to the final corner at turn 18. That's Tickton's main losses to presumably Eduardo Mortara, who's... Way! Oh. That was a bit Larry from uh, Jake Hughes in the McLaren backs off now and where was that coming through six as uh, the other McLaren of Rene Rast continues on his way the roll hoop the only way to differentiate these two cars I've got huge rear locking like enormous rear locking enormous rear locking for Jake Hughes uh, Rast is half a second up in sector one, Bird is six tenths up after the middle sector. That's really not what you want on a on a dusty street circuit. Is to have the rear of the car moving around. Rust is coming for a very quick lap. Yeah, sees. Yeah, he's eight tenths up after the middle sector. Rene Rast he might get a little bit of traffic here. The last couple of corners. Yeah. Motaro through the chicane and then the final corner. And out across the line, and Rast goes quicker than Bird by three tenths of a second. And here's a look at what Jake Hughes got up to. Into turn three. Whoa! whoa. It's like whoa. a handbrake turn. <laughs> <laughs> that was cool. I mean, not for him, but. Feels a bit Dan Dickton, that, doesn't it? Yeah. He's That's kept his boot in. At least the tires are warm now. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. That's great stuff from Hughes. Okay, that makes because I couldn't work out where on the track it was because he was at such a weird part <laughs> of the track, on the right on the inside after a hairpin. Uh, Eleven minutes and twenty seconds to go. So I tell you what's interesting, Jack, is once again in a free practice session, both Penske cars in the top six. Yeah, like we've seen it the whole season, haven't we? Like it practices, they've been top three even sometimes, yeah. and Fern quickest I think in Mexico. Yeah. Um, it's like when it matters in quality of the race, they're just not able so far to, to deliver. And they're not able to come through like the Porsches can. So they qualify 12th or 13th, but don't manage to come through particularly dramatically. Here's Eduardo Mortara coming into turn three. Bit of traffic ahead. Oh, he's going to hit him. He's ticked him. Uh-oh. And Mortara he? thinks it's Tictum's fault. I can't, can't, I, yeah, I can't quite work that one out because Mortara was. Oh, and Gunter was. Wow. So maybe. Wow. What went on there? Maybe. Tictum's backed off because he's seen Gunter in trouble or something. Or but Mortara was never making the corner anyway. Typical traffic in India. <laughs> 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 I have to say, I think uh, on the roads here, you know, the tuk tuk drive. It's all about marginal gains, isn't it? Like they're all just desperate for that extra little half a car length oh, yeah. and it, so it's very I mean, racing driver on an opening lap of the race most of these guys would be amazing yeah. on the <laughs> the first corner. 
you just stick it around the outside. You're like, no, <laughs> this won't work. Oh, it does. Uh, less than 10 minutes to go. Rast back in the pits. Mortara in the pits. And again, still all the Porsche powertrains in the pit lane at the moment. Uh, I've asked the team if they have any update, but nothing yet. Oh, Gunter's getting oh. loose, loose, loose. Over the runoff area. He did the smart thing there. He didn't try and catch the slide. He just let it go across the runoff area because otherwise he could have risked like spinning into the inside barrier. Less than 10 minutes to go. Nico Muller did the fastest middle sector of anyone on that lap. He's 1.4 seconds off the pace of Rene Rast, but his middle sector was rapid. Gunter jumps up into sixth position then. Fractionally ahead of uh, Eduardo Mortara, but again goes off at the Shinkane completely. Yeah, he was behind the curb, wasn't he? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like he's taking a lot of curb and yeah. going all four wheels off. He's just kind of skipping it. Uh, Boemi done the fastest middle sector of anybody. This is Mitch Evans. Sounds like he's firing up for a lap, and we'll uh, watch yeah. this whole lap. That's clearly on the steering wheel. You can see when. Uh, when he's on, on throttle, that's probably when your wheel spinning. You can see the lights blinking. It's for their not traction control. No, not well, traction control, traction control. Sort of tell the driver you're spinning, take it easy. <laughs> Down to the hairpin, you can see he has to take his hands almost see? off the wheel. Oh, Always yeah. on exit. Yes. Yep. Okay, go race on this lap. Let's do go race. Then we'll stop for cold tires. So go race. Sounds like it's a sort of energy conservation setting. So he makes his way around uh, 9 and 10. Through turn 11 here. Then down towards this 12, 13 chicane. Not a curb on the left to put himself in the, the right position for 14. Someone's going to nab a right front at 14, aren't they? Definitely. <laughs> now into the chicane. For the pitch chicane and into the pits. For Mitch Evans. Rast still quickest. Boemi second. Third for Van Dorn. Fourth for Bird. Fifth for the Degrassi. Uh, that Tictum and Mortara incident will be looked at by the stewards. And Hughes goes quickest. A tenth quicker than Rene Rast. I don't see how Tictum can take any blame in that. Yeah, I don't know. As you can see, DaCosta's not even in the car. So it's not like they're waiting to get going again. So I, well, the, the same, I imagine, is true at Andretti. So yeah. um, all the Porsche powertrains not running in free practice one. That's the big story out of yeah. this session, isn't it? Absolutely. So it's interesting, look, Jack, they're doing the, they're just the rears, I think. Mm. Um, and we saw this somewhere earlier this year because the rear tire temps were going really way too high compared to the fronts. I think Mexico, wasn't it? They, a lot of drivers did yeah. just the rears in, um, in Mexico to control the rear tire temp and get a balance. Six minutes and 20 seconds to go. Uh, plank on board with Oliver Rowland. So until they get uh, the data from Pascal Verlein's car, when it gets back to the pits, the, none of the Porsche's powertrains are, are running as a precaution. So that is the reason. That's tough. That's, yeah. that's really uh, going to make it a big challenge for them tomorrow. On the front foot coming into the weekend, but very much on the back foot now. Here comes Roland towards the pit chicane. Through the right, through the left, and into the pits. And uh, there was a lot of fruity radio, Mortar apparently, from Eduardo Mortara when he got hit by, uh, or when he collided with Dan Tictum. But he's now gone to the top of the times on a 15.977, half a second quicker than Jake Hughes. He switches, doesn't he, between his calm Swiss side and the yeah. fiery Italian side. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Clearly that tripped the Italian switch. <laughs> it's very true. I think he's. I think he's French also in in some way. I think he's got triple nationality. Really? But I think it, yeah, I think so. Anyway, Cassidy goes second fastest. Muller, whoa, flying through that chicane. So I don't. Yeah, currently, I'm not seeing many track limit signs come up on the old 
timing screen yet, um, where they did in Valencia, and lap times were getting not necessarily deleted, but certainly noted that that was a lap with track limits, but nothing yet. As, uh, here comes Nico Muller. The Swiss coming through turn six, that is. And now into this 7, 8, 9, 10 sequence. Four and a half minutes to go. Jake Hughes is on a, another good lap. Yeah. yeah imp uh, doesn't improve in the end, loses a bit of time in the middle sector. Dan Tictum's on a quick lap, four tenths up after the middle sector. I feel like these conditions are made for Dan Tictum. Low yeah. grip, the car moving around, and he's a driver who's very comfortable with that. He's, uh, you know, when it's a slippery low grip condition, he's uh, got plenty of car control and reserve to hang on to it and put a lap together. Less than four minutes to go. Motara has returned to the pits, as has Roland. This will be a fun one on board as uh, Tictum goes second quickest. So 600 slower than Eduardo Mortara. But Buemi's six tenths up, Bird is half a second up, Evans is three tenths up. It's a good camera angle, this, isn't it? You really see... Uh, the front of the mirror. Yeah, it must the be. mirror one, yeah. You have quite a good sense of the speed as you're yeah. going through the fences. Uh. Here's a look at Nico Muller. That was him coming through the chicane. That's the thing, he hit it on the rear in the back end unsettled a little. Yeah, I wonder what they're going to do there. It's going to be so difficult to control. Three minutes to go. Uh, Buemi's gone fastest now. Evans now jumps him into second place. 200 slower than Sebastian Buemi. Currently, Van Dorn has slipped down to ninth. Vern is 16th for the DS Penske's bird now to the top of the times. So strong lap times coming in from Jaguar. A sort of home race for them, with the, their main sponsors TCS being an Indian company. Well, also Jaguar's owned by Tata, which is well, an yeah. Indian company. Very true. Two and a half minutes to go, so big weekend for them. Uh, here comes Van Dorn. His first sector is... Well, he's off the middle sector, he's a tenth away. Oh! He's offline, though, and he's off the track. This is. This feels like... I don't know if it's the just the, the dustiness of it or what, but this is the most I've seen Formula E drivers struggle for a long time. This is really loose stuff. Fantastic. I think it's also the tires being a little bit harder than, mm. than last year's tires. It also makes um, makes it a bit more tricky. Set the camera at the top of the times. A 15.531. Nice. 800s quicker than Bird. Nato up into ninth quickest. Uh, Van Dorn goes fifth fastest in the end. Just a, a shade under two tenths away from Sergio Sete Camera. Here's a look at Stoffel Van Dorn. Very wide. And then uh, straight line that chicane. So that, that was the lap he improved on, wasn't it? So, yeah, definitely going to be a bit of track limit discussions, I think, ahead of tomorrow. Nicolas Modui there on the right-hand side at Penske, the I think deputy team principal, I think this is his official title, off the top of my head. I think they and Maserati, I know officially they, you know, it's, it's obviously not really a customer relationship in the way Jaguar and Vision have, but practically speaking, they share a lot of common bits, should we call it? Yeah. Um, hardware, that's the word. Whoa, Sam Bird! <laughs> oh my God! Goodness me, he's nowhere close to the track. <laughs> like he's just flat out through the runoff area. My heart was in my mouth there. I thought that was a wow. Yeah, maybe just thought, let's see if I can take it flat. Yeah, oh, buddy. there we go. Purple sector one. <laughs> Half a second up. Sam Bird, that'll happen if you don't do the corners. I mean, but yeah, they can't. They can't. No. They can't let that lap stand. More no deep way. bird. <laughs> well, I'm sure more of them have done the same. Yeah. Anyway, you can't trust a racing driver, can you? Both the racing drivers stay silent. <laughs> Seven <laughs> minutes ago, oh, Bird's he's getting off. loose again. He's off. This is great. He's just doing his own track. <laughs> I love it. Checker flag is out. 
Evans is second quickest. Sete Camera goes quick as Birds could, might go to the top of the time series. Half a second up. Uh, Evans has, has uh, got a track limits next to his name now on the timing screens here. Here's Birds uh, Radio. Mr. Mr. 12 13 corner. Well, it obviously wasn't intentional then. Well, it was revealed, but turn one two was completely <laughs> intentional because he didn't talk about that and he didn't get a track limits warning. Oh, so. and who was that bird? Uh, that was Vern going straight over, I think, at that final chicane. Comes across the line to check the check and flag. Cassidy's on a good lap as well, and Buemi's on a good lap. Van Dorn is improving too. Here comes Cass. Doesn't get it stopped. Goes straight on at the pitch chicane. Out across the line and uh, improves up into 10th place. Some big, well, the top 11 are separated by half a second, but then there's some big gaps back to sort of Muller and Fenestras, and there goes Buemi to the top of the times. Van Dorn jumps up into second place. So Buemi is going to end the session fastest on a 1 minute 15, 0 0.088, two tenths quicker than Stoffel Van Dorn. Set a camera third, Bird fourth, Degrassi in fifth spot. Oliver Rowland only did, how many laps did he do? The 12. 12. Yeah. But his fastest lap was in lap four. Yeah. Seems like he didn't improve or he was, I don't know. Yeah. This is what happened to Bird at turn one. Let's Everybody have a look at this one again. Everybody doing towards the end. Just fired it in. Whoa. That was the one where he was just <laughs> gone. He tried, he tried. Yeah. And then this one here as well, coming into uh, 12 and 13. So wild stuff from Bird. Still finished fourth quickest, sixth for Evans. Uh, right, I'm going to let you guys go and do um, the FE show, which starts in uh, about five or ten minutes' time, something like eight minutes' time. Uh, what are the thoughts on this first practice session, Karun? Um I think that it's just going to evolve a lot as the track cleans up and uh, the line cleans up. Um, I would like to know just how they're going to play turn one because yeah. I think uh, we're seeing some big differences there in how brave <laughs> people are willing to be with track limits. But a remarkable session for Porsche, well, or sort of unremarkable, but they're, they're going to have their work cut out, Nelson. Yeah, it's hard to say until they sort out the Shinkane. Obviously, it's going to be the, the topic of uh, the driver's briefing later on because... I mean, there's easily half a second to be gained or not, or even perhaps even more, I don't know. Um, so let's see what happens tomorrow. I'm sure they're going to sort it out in driver's briefing later on today. Did you like driver's briefing? Were you talkative in driver? Out of the nah. two, in fact, I know the answer here. Who, yeah. was, who was more talkative out of the two of you in the driver's Karun briefing? Karun was, was born to talk. I, was, I think he was born <laughs> talking, wasn't you? He probably, yeah. 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 <laughs> Guys, thank you very much. I'll let you go now to, uh, to get ready for the FE show, which will be coming up in a, in a few moments' time. So stay with us or head to the uh, Formula E YouTube. You can watch it there. It's uh, not geo-blocked anywhere, I don't think. So you can, you can get stuck into, into some of that stuff after their mammoth stint for FP1. Uh, Stoffel van Dorn finishing the session second fastest, just under hey, two tenths slower team. than it's Sebastian team. Buemi. This is race control. The car on the right-hand side is having a technical issue, so I would suggest everyone goes to the left. Go to the left, ignore the car on the right-hand side. Oh, so that's the reason we've got a bit more Hyderabad traffic, because Kelvin van der Linde on the left um, is, uh, has a problem, as he did earlier on. Ah, the FE website. Formula E website is the place to watch the Formula E show. Apologies. Uh, so the FE website is the place to go to watch the FE show, which will be starting in five minutes' time. Uh, so van der Linde on the left in the Apt Cupra stationary. So everyone's having to sort of wiggle around him as they do their practice start. And it's such a long run down towards the first corner here. It must be one of the longest we've ever had in Formula E. I will ask someone from the FIA that a little bit later on because I, uh, I don't really remember a, a longer one. Argentina was quite long. Maybe Battersea Park down towards the, the first corner, but it's uh, quite rare to have such a long run towards the first corner. And away goes the McLaren off the line. But a reminder, 
no lap time set by any of the Porsche cars. They're currently first and second in both the drivers and the team's championship. But because of an accident for Pascal Verlein at the start of the session, none of the cars did any running. Well, you know, two or three laps. And that was it. And then they were pitted for precautionary reasons. Here's Kevin van der Linde's radio. Uh, temperature is recovering, maybe, and then we try it again. So they're trying to reboot van der Linde's car. So here's a look at the highlights of that first free practice session. A bit of a delay before we got going around NTR Gardens. Jake Hughes, all set. Roland chatting with Nick Heidfeld. Sasha Fenestras having a laugh. Then the business got underway, but almost instantly at the uh, final corner of turn 18, there was a big accident for the Porsche of Pascal Verlein and the championship leader as well. The cars pulled out the pits, but it was uh, literally on that first lap that Verlein had his incident. Hitting the barriers hard. So, they got going again. And then we saw a lot of Larry driving, really. Really struggling in the low grip conditions. Evans fighting the car. Through attack mode activation, Jake Hughes got loose. Kept it all together very nicely. Rene Rast attacking the curbs. Eduardo Mortara into the back of Dan Tictum. Down at the hairpin. Much to Mortara's frustration. A few drivers cutting the chicane. Stoffel van Dorn going wide. But it was Sebastian Buemi who ended the session quickest despite Bird's dramatic moment. Buemi was fastest in the end. So, that's it for free practice one. As I say, the Formula E show starting in uh, two and a half minutes time on the website so stick around for that we're going to be speaking to Jehan de Ruvela, i think getting stuck in with the mahindra team and all sorts of uh, other things darren's been out and about in the city of hyderabad we'll bring you all of that but it is sebastian buemi who tops the time for envision racing two tenths quicker than stoffel van dorn sergio city camera in third bird fourth degrassi fifth for mahindra evans down in sixth position i think there were a few penalties added for uh, track limits lap times getting deleted uh, Mortara 7th, Verne in 8th, Gunter 9th, Nick Cassidy completing the top 10. And outside of that top 10 was just missing out Dan Tictum, although he looked quick at times. Jake Hughes and Rene Rass 13th and 16th. So a bit of a struggle for them. And no time set for Da Costa, Dennis, Lotterer or Verline. The two top teams in the championship unable to run in free practice one for the Green Co. Hyderabad is race control. control. Just a heads up on some of the scheduling. So Sebastian Buemi, the quickest driver out there, chatting to Sylvain Filippi. Stoffel van Dorn, second fastest, two tenths slower than Sebastian Buemi but we still have an awful lot of action to come. The race coming up tomorrow in 3 p.m. tomorrow, local time here in Hyderabad, five and a half hours behind the UK, uh, sorry, ahead of the UK, four and a half ahead of Europe. Bird ended that session fourth fastest as he looks to get back to winning ways, having had a podium in Diria last time out. But as I say, we get back underway with on-track action tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Qualifying gets underway at 10.40 and the race itself is at three o'clock. Tune in now for the Formula E show with Nikki and the gang. You can watch that on the Formula E website. We've got plenty more to come here in Hyderabad. International motorsport returns to India for the first time in a decade. And there's the move. Hyderabad e -Prix. We go green in India. 
Hello and a very warm welcome to the FE Show live from the Greenco Hydrobad e -Pri. Now this is a particularly special one because throughout Formula E's history, there has always been the ambition to race in India and it's happening for the first time this weekend. I'm absolutely delighted to say that joining me along for the ride, we have uh, our expert, probably India's best export in fact, uh, Formula, former Formula One driver and Formula E driver, Karun Chandak, who's going to be our expert on site. And welcome back Nelson Piquet Jr our inaugural Formula E champion Hello. how are you guys doing it's probably been a while since you had the chance to catch up yeah no it's been good to uh, spend the day catching up I mean I'm amazed he's still awake he's just landed oh, from, yeah. from, <laughs> good South, on from you. Brazil which we'll is get the uh, coffee in. Good, yeah he's doing uh, well I've been managed happy happy to be here happy to see Karun it's been a while since we haven't yeah hung well, out we're, uh, we're looking forward to some good catch-ups over yeah. the weekend um but Karun I feel like we should really kick off with you because this is such a special one. There's been a lot of ambition to obviously race on the streets in India. There hasn't been an international motorsport race here for over 10 years, and now it's happening. Um, what does it mean? Yeah, we haven't had a world championship race um, in, in a decade, as you say, since the Grand Prix went away. So it's great. I think there's a, there's a great buzz about uh, the event. You know, in the city, you go around and people are excited. People are intrigued because initially, you know, it's almost like in year one where we go like, and people say, what, there's electric race cars, what's, what's this all about? So I think there is a lot of um, intrigue about uh, coming to the event. And uh, I'm told there's going to be a full crowd, which is great news. And I think, yeah, the teams all seem excited to be here. And it really is a magical location, such a vibrant place to be in Hyderabad as well. Um, obviously, we got the opportunity to see some of the cars out on track in FP1. And what an incredible track that they have created on the streets of India, in between uh, lakes and lamp posts. It's not an easy job, but it looks pretty special. Formerly has done it again. Yeah. Not a new location, another amazing track. Uh, I'm regretting not being able to drive this track because it <laughs> seems to be one of those tracks like Moscow in our season one high speed, very technical, uh, you know, quick chicanes, quick corners. I mean, it's, it's, it seems like an amazing track. So congratulations, everybody in Formula 8, because you guys done it, done it again. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, now we're going to bring in, um, we've got a bit of a special guest here with us from the Mahindra team. We have that reserve driver, Jihan Darula. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much for joining us. Can you tell us a bit about your journey into Formula E? Yes, yeah, so I've been racing in uh, Formula 2 for the fa past uh, three years, so it feels really nice to be part of the Formula E family now, obviously part of an Indian team. Uh, my goal, hopefully next year or the next couple of years, will be to be driving here on my home weekend, so yeah. Hopefully this year goes to plan and I can be on this grid next year. So you're walking you around <laughs> tripping Lucas and Ollie up, just hoping that I you I offered Ollie a few dinners, he's rejected <laughs> me. And, and uh, you know, basically replaced all Karun's records that he made in Formula E. Yeah. <laughs> Won't be hard. Oh, you never know, you never know. Um, have you had the chance to catch up with the drivers? Uh, not after the session, because okay. I was actually out on track watching in a uh, couple of corners. But uh, yeah, I'll have a chat with them after. I think uh, they're looking pretty strong, so... I think there's a good possibility tomorrow that they can get into the duel, so it's looking pretty good. What do you so think far. about the new Gen 3 car? Yeah, it's definitely a big step forward, especially in terms of power. It, it's a lot more. Uh, from what I hear from the drivers, I think they want a bit softer tires so they can push a bit more in the corners. But We all, we all do. We yeah, all love yeah, soft yeah. tires. But yeah, I think uh, the car's a big step forward, and uh, I've not driven one yet. So When, I'm actually, when are you going to drive one? Uh, in the rookie test in Berlin. So Amazing. Really looking forward to that, yeah. Yeah, we'll be chatting about your drive a little bit later. You got to experience the Gen 3 car, lucky thing. Uh, yes, we'll talk about <laughs> it later on. <laughs> um, now, we better quickly uh, also have a recap of what just happened in FP1, because unbelievably, we saw Porsche, Pascal Verlein go into the wall, and then the other Porsche drivers haven't been out in that session. Uh, and they were a firm favorite to come into this race weekend. What's going to happen? Well, I think first they need to understand what happened because it was clearly not a driver error. Uh, it looked like the, the, the throttle got stuck open. Here we go. This is the view from Da Costa's car. So look for the car in front uh, and you can see his teammate there, Berlin, going into the barrier. Um, and this is the outboard shot there. Look at the speed he's going and clearly some sort of a glitch uh, and Porsche took the precautionary step of parking not just Da Costa but also their customer cars at Andretti. I mean, that's the big story out of FE1, I think, um, because, it, you know, coming into today, yeah. they've been 1-2 in, in every race. So, uh, yeah, big story for today. Yeah, I mean, Nelson, you know, coming into the championship, watching 
their progression, their dominance, a one-two in every think, race so far yeah. this season. It's early days. It's, uh, you it's know, early we're, days. we're still only into going into round four, but still, we've never seen such dominance at the start of a season. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I sort of felt it a little bit was was Mercedes maybe two years ago was uh, when we when they were at uh, in Saudi, but um, yeah, I mean, for, it's a shame Pascal obviously and all the Porsche drivers are missing, especially for the Costa, which. You know, he, he was going to get the rhythm back, probably recover a bit of points, you know, then missing practice because of the precaution. So hopefully they'll figure out what's what's happening. And uh, I want to see the cost up there. I mean, uh, we know he's got it. Yeah. It's just uh, maybe a bit of bad luck in the beginning, new powertrain, new car, getting used to the new tire. It just happens. So, but uh, still one more practice tomorrow. And the cost, he picks up the tracks pretty quickly. There's also the other power, Porsche powertrain drivers, but um, yeah. We Gladly, the, the driver is fine as well. Well, let's go down to Radzi because uh, I think he's got a bit of an update of what's going on in the Porsche garage. Well, a picture very much paints a thousand words here. It doesn't take a lot of explaining to see that the front wings received an awful lot of damage. In fact, it's not even there. So that has just come in about five seconds ago, Pascal Verlein's car. Now, the good news is that Pascal Verlein is essentially OK. He has an injured foot, and we'll be giving you an update on that in about 53 minutes' time, right up to date here. Now, you can obviously see that on the other side, what Antonio Felix, Felix da Costa, who actually is milling around here, his car was brought in, as were the Andretti cars, and that is because they don't know what's caused this. And because they don't know what's caused it to be on the safe side they wanted all of their Porsche drivetrain calves to be brought in for safety reasons you can see that these guys here there's a sense of frenetic sort of uncertainty here we've got the officials looking around the car and which is really unthinkable given the scenario that Pascal Verlaine came into this with three podiums in three races two victories in Diria he was on top of the world and now all we know is essentially that we don't know Oh, thanks very much, Razzy, for that update. Uh, joining us now is Oliver Rowland. Uh, right, talk to us about the track. The first time we get to hear from a driver about the experience of FP1. Yeah, it's actually pretty cool. I think um, <laughs> turn one and two especially is very quick. And uh, there's a bit of an issue with track limits. So you can you have to push to the limit, but not be too far over. But um, it's interesting to see how we're going to see tonight how other people set up the car, because you can use a lot of curb. And it depends on how you use the ride height, basically. But the... The circuit's pretty good fun. It's pretty technical. The tyres don't last more than a lap. So it's going to be... Uh, Talk us through the temperature as well, because obviously, I mean, it was 34 degrees during that session. The hottest race that we've seen so far this season. How hard is that going to be to manage? Yeah, I mean, obviously the tyres, even at the first couple of races, have been difficult to manage over one lap. And then you come here and the temperature is much higher. It is much more difficult. As well, on top, we only have two sets of tires. So, you know, we're managing the whole session on one set. So the so it's definitely, it means that the tire, it works much better when it's cooler. Yeah, basically the inside doesn't really warm up, but the surface overheats. So you end up in a position where you don't have much grip, but then you overheat the surface and have less grip. So it's kind of a bit of a catch-22. But it's all about managing, and I think... Uh, we, we understand a little bit, so. We saw some people pitting in that session to just change the rears and go out for a quick lap towards the end. Do you think that's something we'll see in the duels? You know, people just trying to control one, one axle of the car? Let's see tonight. Um, obviously, we have to sift through the data, but it feels like then that this track is uh, quite high on overheating, and in, even in Riyadh, we're changing all four, so I would imagine we'll be all four. Um, Oliver. Obviously, this is a massive race for Mahindra, their very first home race. What have you been doing so far with the team to kind of mark this occasion? Lots and is media. that bringing back uh, or bringing uh, a little bit of added pressure? Do you thrive under pressure? Or yeah, crack? I guess so. I mean, already we're, I think, starting the season, we knew we were a long way behind. So, you know, we've quickly caught up and we've actually done a good job. And I think we come here as kind of underdogs, but with the motivation to do well. So, of course, there's pressure, the bosses are around and all that sort of stuff. But... No, for me, I'm just going to go out and, and put everything <laughs> As always, and, and, as if you would ever do anything yeah. different, Oliver. You're going to go with the Indian food, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's OK. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> our local There's expert. not many toilets around. Uh, <laughs> couldn't come up with any good local recommendations for restaurants. I haven't Maybe been to Hyderabad in 19 years. But you must I know live some people that know some people. <laughs> it's a big country. <laughs> it's a big country. Yeah. Um, Oli, just a quick one. Um, we sort of talk about this race being a bit of a reset because suddenly everyone's coming into this race. It's a level playing field because it's a new race. A lot of work has obviously been done on the simulator. How representative was the track that you were racing on the sim to the track here? And 
is it a reset? Does it feel like a level playing field or, yeah, or perhaps I think not it is because obviously the drivers have to learn everything. It's a pretty challenging track. Yeah. I think the biggest difference for us was the condition of the track in shakedown was far below what we expected. Even now the track's ramping up in grip every lap um, right. and, and tomorrow is going to be the same. So it's going to be all about adapting and finding the grip at the right time, I think. Do and, you enjoy uh, it more coming to tracks, brand new tracks that yeah. uh, nobody knows? All the, <laughs> Yeah, I, it used to excite me, and now when you drive in shakedown with 300 kilowatts, it, it feel, and it's that slippery, it's not the nicest experience. But it's nice that the track evolves and you have to find the grip. That's the, the biggest thrill for me. Like, at some point, you have to go over the limit to find it as well. Can I ask you about the, the racing? Because, you know, down in turn three, we've also got a long run. Yeah. Turn one is pretty quick through that chicane, one, two. Um, what, what do you think about people going offline and being able to, to also go to attack mode? Because that's going to be way off the racing line, isn't it? Is that going to be tricky? I was thinking overtaking would be quite easy because it's pretty high saving here. But on the other hand, Love it. Well, good luck finding the limit and not going over it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Oliver. Uh, now it's time to find out what Derin has been up to. She's been exploring all the local delights of Hyderabad. Hi everyone, I'm Darren Adetosie and welcome to Hyderabad for the first ever Indian race of the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship. Now, as this is our first time racing here, I thought that it'd only be right to take a look around and show you some of the amazing highlights that this city has to offer. So this is Hyderabad Discovered, presented by Saudia. So our first stop is the iconic Shamana of Hyderabad, which was built in 1591, so nearly 500 years old, and is known as the Akta Triumph of the East. This is an amazing spot for you to come and visit if you're in Hyderabad, and it's also a great spot for those Instagram selfies. I can say tried and tested myself. Just next to it, we have the Mecca Majid, which is the oldest and the largest mosque in all of India. And then down the road, there is the Lad Bazaar, which is an incredible spot for you to do some shopping, have a bit of a wander, and soak up the culture. Now, as you guys know, I absolutely love my green spaces, so I've made my way down to the Hyderabad Botanical Garden, which is the perfect place for relaxing and unwinding before the hectic race weekend. But it's really cool to finally get down and see this because Hyderabad recently won the World Green City Awards in 2022, which recognises the work of the local government who have planted an extraordinary amount of trees, which I can definitely see here, and increasing the tree cover in the state from 24% to 33%. This is another wonderful green space here in Hyderabad called the Durgam Churu, which spans over 83 acres of land. But as you can see behind me, this one has a lake. So you can do lots of trekking, fishing or boating. And if you're in the market for a market, then look no further than Shilpam Ram Craft Village, which is the perfect spot to do some shopping and grab some souvenirs. And all of these are created by local artisans. Here, there's also an art gallery, museum, and even workshops if you want to get involved with making some of these yourselves. What a beautiful and green city with so much to do and discover here. But don't forget to join us this Saturday for Formula E's first ever Indian race, the Green Coat Hyderabad e -Prix. I'll see you then. Well, you really did get the full VVIP experience, Darren. What can um, I say? It looked absolutely beautiful. What a vibrant city. Out of all of the places that you got to visit, was there a particular highlight? Oh, you know me, I love my shopping. Yeah. So most likely it's probably the market, the Shilpa Run Market. What did you buy? You definitely you know would have bought something. No shopping took place on this visit, but that's only because there wasn't enough time. <laughs> Trust me, if there was, I will be there shopping. Um, but no, You'll be as there you probably say, in about half an hour when we <laughs> exactly. get off air. <laughs> but no, as you said, such a vibrant city. And one thing that really surprised me is how many green spaces that there are actually here. I think when you think of Hyderabad, you think of the hustle and bustle, the getting to see the parks, the lakes. I was just like, this is a vibe, very zen. Yeah, well, it's an amazing achievement to have won the World Green City Award. So, uh, yeah, congratulations to Hyderabad. Thank you for showing us around. Um, and the other thing, actually, you probably noticed is how many electric cars there are on the roads now, which I've really 
like, been surprised about. I mean, e-mobility, it's e-mobility week here in Hyderabad. There's a huge push all around the country, Karun. Uh, you were in a lovely Mercedes EQS last night, a nice little electric car. Um, talk us through about how it's changing here and what changes you're seeing. I think there's a there's a big push from the government. Um, you know, they, they, the government are making uh, really quite quite a strong um, EV revolution. It has to be said. You know, they're incentivizing people, like in most other countries, in terms of tax benefits and, and car registration costs and things like that. Uh, and both Tata and Mahindra, as Indian companies, have committed uh, to hugely investing in, in building EV cars here. So it's not just your Hyundai's and Kia's. You know, the global players that you see it back in the UK, they're Indian companies producing cars um, at a price point that's appealing to the Indian audience. So yeah, I think that there is certainly an EV revolution and, and it's a good time for Formula E to be here. Yeah, it's brilliant. I've also spied, there've been a couple of electric tuk-tuks running up and down this pit lane, which I'm very keen to have a go on. Have you had, either of you managed to I mean, jump on I board yet? I could just picture you running around Chiswick High Street in one of those, it'd be great. <laughs> Do you know what? That's not a bad I idea. Give them the idea. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Let's try and make that happen. Um, right, well, there we go. There's a vision in itself. But let's go down to Sordens now, who's got, a minute, got an update on the season so far. After three races, Tag Heuer, Porsche and Avalanche Andretti have quickly set themselves up as the teams to beat, following the immense success of Porsche-powered Pascal Verlein and Jake Dennis. In Mexico, a dominant display saw Brit Jake Dennis take the first win of the season, followed by his now championship rival Pascal Wehrlein in P2. Avalanche Andretti got the first bragging rights of the season and the Porsche powertrain 1-2 displayed that in the all-new era of the championship, it's this manufacturer that have found the pace and efficiency quicker than others. The two action-packed races under the lights in Diria showcase the challenges of driving the new Gen 3 car on an incredibly demanding and technical circuit, as well as the stark differences between one lap and race pace, and how in Formula E, without the latter, you can quickly become a sitting duck. Back-to-back -back wins for Pascal Wehrlein from 9th and 5th further proved the Germans' pedigree in this championship, and the hugely impressive and efficient Porsche 99X he has under his control. If the paddock wasn't sure about Pascal's title-winning potential after Mexico, they certainly are now. But he does have close competition. The only other race winner so far, Jake Dennis. Dennis's two second-place finishes in Diria, the first from P11, showcase the caliber of driver that he is and a level of consistency that we've seen win Formula E championships in the past. The battle at the top is already getting very interesting. The question is, how much longer will the very collaborative relationship between Porsche and Avalanche Andretti remain the same when there's title fights to be won? Rookie Jake Hughes' hugely impressive start to life in Formula E is nothing short of sensational. He continues to astound the paddock with his qualifying performances, maiden pole position in round three, and point scoring so early into his rookie season. After their time-topping performance during testing, all eyes of the paddock were fixed firmly on Maserati MSG Racing and DS Penske as the ones to watch. But the reality after three races has been very different. The fastest driver during testing, Maximilian Gunther, is yet to score a point in a very tough start to the season for Maserati MSG Racing. Three races in and the team have just two points to their name. Reigning champion Stoffel van Dorn has only managed to score a single point in his title defending season so far, as life at DS Penske proves to be challenging. But with the right tweaks and developments, there are signs of a package that could be seen to battle at the front, driven by two former champions. Teams will be working tirelessly to catch up with the Porsche's efficiency and race pace, but they too will be trying to improve their one lap qualifying performance and give themselves an easier task than winning races from as far back as P9. There's still plenty more action to come this season, lots more unknowns, and with three new race locations to contend with, starting with Hyderabad this weekend, it's by no means wrapped up yet. Well, that has perfectly brought us up to date in terms of the races. However, in free practice one, the game has now changed. But that said, Saunders, Porsche and the powertrain, will they dominate again? Well, it was a lot easier to say before that practice session, for sure. But let's just assume the fact that Pascal's fighting fit, the car's repaired and everything. Yes. That has thrown a spanner in the works in more ways than one. Because there's a lot <laughs> of good. repairs to be done now. <laughs> uh, but if you just look at form alone, 
where they've been in the last few races. It's all about race pace. They haven't qualified particularly well, but in the race, where it matters, they've been climbing their way up the order into podiums and race winning positions. And when we're talking about wins and podiums from as far back as P9 and P11, you know, that takes some seriously good race pace. And that is coming from, at the moment, the powertrain in the cup. So you said that they're the powertrain. To the layman, what is the powertrain and why is Porsche so effective? The powertrain is effectively the thing that converts the energy from the battery into the car moving in the direction it needs to go. Whereas it's all about the efficiency. So with that energy that's coming from the battery, it goes through hardware and software, and it's about minimizing loss in that process. So that, you know, if you can minimize loss, you can push for longer, you can push faster for longer in the race, and you don't have to save as quickly as other drivers do. So what we're seeing in the races at the moment is drivers that are very good at one lap pace are up there in qualifying. Yes. They're having to save energy earlier in the race, falling back down the grid, where people like the Porsche and, and the, the Andrettis and the Porsche powertrain are able to push and just keep pushing for longer in the race and save much later and find themselves right up in podium in winning positions. So four Porsche and Andretti drivers, two are in the top two. The other two are very much out of it as things stand currently. So with that said, who are the other guys who could challenge? What are the teams that potentially might have learned with Gen 3 cars? I, if you look at past races, I would say that Jaguar, TCS Racing and, and Neon McLaren are the two probably focus points here because just looking from Mexico to Diria, huge amounts of progress from the Jaguar team. You know, they had an absolute stinker in Mexico and then Sam Bird's on the podium straight back into four in the, round, in the first round in Diria. And then in the second race, it was almost like a 24-hour turnaround for race pace for McLaren. Again, up there in qualifying, one lap race pace, run one lap pace, sorry. But then when it came to the race, they were struggling. They were having to defend constantly from people with more energy battling them behind. And then just 24 hours later, René Rass holds off Samba to get himself a podium. Talking about battling, very quickly, Dan Tictum. Yes. Brilliant in quali, struggles in races a little bit. Why is that? I mean, that's, this is a perfect example of the one lap pace versus the, the race pace because Dan Tictum is driving the socks off that car this season. He's doing incredibly well to get it in the position that it is in qualifying, but they struggle with efficiency during the race. So they're having to save so much earlier when others are just pushing and pushing and pushing. So at the result means that Dan Tickson finds himself unable to battle quite early on in the race. So as we'd love nothing more than a fairy tale, how cool would it be if Mahindra managed to produce a result? Can they do it? It would, be a, it would be a mega result for them, but not unfounded because Formula E has this weird thing where home races can often be very magical for home teams uh, and drivers. It's not even going to be that much of an arse. Lucas de Grassi, one side of the garage, already got a pole position, already on the podium. Oliver Rowland loves a new circuit and pole positions at new circuits. And in fact, I just spoke to him coming straight out of the car and he said to me, I said, looks challenging, mate. And he said, yeah, I love it. I'm going to be quick here. Oh, Karun, you heard it here first. Uh, well, we'll find out very soon, but let's take a look at the circuit. Let's go on board. I've got Mitch Evans's lap, who was fifth fastest in the Jaguar. Uh, and we're heading down towards this first chicane, which has been the big talking point. So let's just have a look at it. So now what the drivers have been told, and I just spoke to Evans's teammate, Sam Bird, is that as long as they touch these two curbs, so you've got that one there, and then you've got the other one on the other side there, then you're okay. Then you are within track limits. So it, it, and for everyone at home who's, who's watching this, who might be wondering, hang on, he's gone off the track. That is actually, at the moment, the best way that the FIA are able to police it. So uh, Evans, going through that first, uh, first couple of corners, very, very high speed, big commitment, down towards the hairpin for turn three. Really tricky for the drivers to get the braking right and really sight the braking point accurately there. The car's still moving around under braking on this uh, dusty day. Now watch this, as he gets up, to this next left-hand corner. I'll just move it along, and uh, you'll see the barrier on the inside. That is so, so close. I mean, for, for Evans on this lap, considering it's the first practice session, you know, I can't wait to see what happens when we get into qualifying and the risks that the drivers are taking. But uh, yeah, he was pretty committed on that lap. Now, the low sun, this shouldn't be a problem tomorrow, but I just want to say for today, look at this. He can't really see where the track's going. I mean, the, the corner's somewhere around there, but it's, it's quite hard to really make out where the, uh, where the apex is. So, um, yeah, very challenging in these conditions. But as I said, this won't be an issue tomorrow because everything happens a bit earlier in the day. Into this flowing section now towards 11, 12, 13. Uh, very tricky braking and turning here. Again, the sun in his eyes. And actually, we, he went off track. He did get a warning for that one at the apex of 13. 
And now coming up to the final sector of the lap, the last couple of corners, another chicane here. He's got a car in front of him, so a little bit of traffic there, but nicely gets the nose of the car in. And that Jaguar riding the left-hand curb quite well, quite good compliance in the car. He gets a little bit of traffic, which I think would have hurt him a bit, but a pretty clean lap there from Mitch Evans. And uh, they look in reasonable shape here, both he and Sam Bird in good form so far. Lovely stuff. Thank you very much, Karun. I just love that track. So fast and flowing and plenty of overtaking opportunities. Um, now, guys, before we get into, I want to ask you a bit of a race predictions. But before we do that, um, I want to take a trip down memory lane. My favourite of the lanes. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Not the right and lanes, the memory one. Uh, look, looking back to the year, the final race, when Nelson won his championship. Let's take a little look. Nelson Piquet, I believe you can hear me. Uh, congratulations, it looked a tough race out there. Have I, have I won the championship? <laughs> By our calculations, you have, mate. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> so we tried so hard. Oh my God, I cannot believe it. Well done. Superb stuff. Uh, congratulations, uh, Nelson, we'll speak to you later. Most stressful thing in my career because so you hear I was like they were like oh tell Nelson he's won the championship I was like has he and they were like well yeah do you think he has I said like, well yeah I think so but there was someone had someone retired didn't they right at the end who was it Sarazan or someone hit the line so everyone got shuffled up places so I'm trying to do the maths they're like tell him so I thought well I won't tell him I'll just say oh congratulations what a race hoping he'd be like yeah and the team have told him right hoping. But he had no idea. So he's like, have I won it? I was like, right, well, I've just got to say it then. So I could have been wrong. I could have been <laughs> well, wrong. Lucky your maths were good, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> basically, they, I remember them telling during the race, I had to finish, I don't know, the positions between, behind Buemi. I think yeah, it was yeah, one yeah. or two. I don't remember. I did it, but I mean, still, you know, I mean, it takes a while for it to sink in, you know, and then the team didn't say anything because I, I, maybe they didn't want to take the responsibility of telling me that and then not being it. So when you said it, <laughs> are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> so, so, I mean, I, I kind of knew it, but I wasn't 100% sure. And yeah. you know, it's one of those things. I mean, it's, it's yes or no, and yeah. it's a big difference. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, exactly. I can't it, be like, maybe, I don't know. It I was know, clearly, but. obviously, one of the biggest moments of your career, an emotional one. Um, what was it like then coming back into Formula E as a reigning champion? You know, what someone like Stoffel van Dorn going through at the moment, when he's here, there's a bit of a target on his back and the performance hasn't really come for him yet. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, it was a big, a, a big weight off my shoulders, definitely um, when I came back for season two. Obviously, things didn't go to plan because, you know, I mean, Neo at the time didn't have the funds that other teams had. But anyway, long story short, I mean, it, it was it was an amazing moment. I think the whole team, what they did the whole year, even throughout the year, we didn't even know halfway through the year if we were going to finish the season because the team didn't really have the budget. And then race after race, getting good results, getting the prize money that formerly, I mean, it was such a roller coaster year full of emotions that uh, I've never had anything even close to that after in my career, even before or after. <laughs> And, well, we are almost towards the end of the show. So before we do say our goodbyes, I want to get your predictions for tomorrow's race, which mean absolutely nothing because we're usually completely wrong. Um, but should we give it a go? Uh, there is actually a QR Q code up on your screen at the moment. If you do want to get involved, uh, scan it, uh, make your predictions. And there are prizes at stake. So it does mean something. Uh, Jack, what are we going to kick off with? Let's go DS Penske. We just saw them looking so sad. Hopefully, oh. they'll be look happier. I, if someone looks sad, I'm like, okay, fine. You, well, you can win. I'm going to go Porsche. I don't Whoa. think they're, they're going to qualify well, but they've shown some efficiency that has been unreal in the last yeah. two races that even if they don't qualify well because of the problems they've been having, yeah. I think they're going to race very well. Nice. Well, there we have it. That would be a nice sort of uh, front row there. Yeah. DS and Porsche. Well, there we have it, our predictions. Do you agree with us? Let us know. Join us tomorrow. Qualifying 10.30 and the race at 2.30 here in Hyderabad. <laughs>